So let's have a little con con concentration. Let's that, have that'd a little, be good. Yeah, I think we're going to concentrate. Have a consultation. Tell me what you usually have done, and then I'll tell you what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Yeah. So normally yeah. I do have like a number two through here mm -hmm. and at the back, mm -hmm. and then cut on point the top and kind of blend it in, I guess. So with scissors. Yeah. So now Because this, this gets really thick like Jack Nicholson. Okay. So let's do it. Yeah. And Jeff, what do you do? I'm the minister at Bridgewater United Church. Stop. Yeah. You're the first man of the cloth that I've ever had <laughs> Is here. Is that right? Do you know what? You're never going to be the same. <laughs> After being at Heidi's, you're never, or maybe I'm never going to be the same. Maybe not, no. Oh my gosh, your hair really is long, isn't it? It is, yeah. So today you're off. But today I'm off, yeah. Now when I think mm. of a minister, they only work on Sundays. Right. And, and I'm not saying that to be rude. So what does it consist of the rest of the week? So I would say that Sunday morning is actually kind of the smallest part of where I spend my time. Really? I mean, yeah, and you have to think that on Sunday morning, there's an awful lot of preparation that goes into just that, right? The message, the service, okay. everything else. But I think in uh, I spend a lot of my time working on new initiatives and, you know, projects for sustainability for the church. We are doing an online service every week now so we're producing that so do support. you give every sunday like a typical sermon with quotes from the bible and do you call it a sermon or yeah do you call yeah, it, yeah okay or do you base it on things that are going on in the community or things that are going on in the world or so we would have a scripture reading every sunday and then my sermon would be based on that but i would be contextualizing that hopefully to what's happening in the world and you know people's lives so you, you know it's how do you interpret that in a way that has meaning for us today right so listen so i'm in your chair today right yes. so uh, when am i going to see you in one of my chairs well when do you want to see me in one of your chairs we're open every sunday what's your hours <laughs> 10 30. 10.30? I could probably have my face on for 10.30. So would you call upon me if I were to show up? Would you call upon me to do anything? Or could I just mm. sit there and look at your handsome face? Yeah, you can just sit there. I might, you know, I might try to work you into the sermon somehow. Though. Okay, because I get bored very quickly. <laughs> do you? Yes. Yeah, so, and like, if you're boring up there, um, you're going to see me go. Yeah. Like this, right? I try not to be, right? So, you know, I grew up in Rhodes Corner. Yeah directly across from the Lutheran Church. Okay. And we went to church and Sunday school every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And you know what my brother and I did growing up in that church? Killed flies on the windowsill. <laughs> Didn't hear a thing that the, yeah. that the minister was yeah. saying. Like absolutely mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. So do you find, and I'm not trying to divert your question away from me coming to church, do you find that attendance is well i guess with the pandemic well the pandemic's everything changed has everything been right you down. know yeah so but the church generally churches generally in terms of numbers are in decline the congregations no matter what church you're in are older the church used to be the center of the community in lots of ways and it no longer really well look at the churches that have closed really is oh yeah yeah and uh there was a time when things didn't really happen on Sundays but church, right? And even when I grew up playing hockey, there weren't hockey games on Sunday morning. They'd be in the afternoon. Well, my mother wouldn't do laundry on a Sunday. Right, yeah. My dad wouldn't do outdoor yard work. Things didn't happen on right. Sunday because we went to church and to Sunday school. Stores weren't open on Sundays That's either. Right. That's right. So how do you entice people to attend church? That's a good question. I think the church... Um, the church is evolving and that's one of the things that I think about and I think we think about is who says that church has to be you know Sunday morning at 10 30 with with four hymns and you know a sermon and a scripture so one of the things with the online service that we do is people can watch it whenever they want and we have families that'll sit down at night on a Sunday night or maybe it's a Wednesday night that they they watch the service so it's how do you make it accessible and I think 
it's really a question of um, how do we meet the spiritual need of younger generations and and I think we need to ask ourselves whether the way that we have traditionally been doing it is is the way that's actually going to meet that need, right? So you grew up in the church. I grew up in the church. I'm assuming you don't attend regularly now. No. How come? Well, I got into going camping. Mm-hmm. And I'm away on the weekends. Uh-huh. So what happened is we have horses here. Mm-hmm. And my husband was always doing the horse thing. Yeah. And I got a seasonal spot in the valley camping. Right. So I would leave here when my kids were younger on a Thursday night. And right. I didn't get home until 10, 10 o'clock on Sunday nights. Mm -hmm. That's why I never attended church. Right. And I've been there 23 years. Wow. So, it, it, like, it, it, you know, I think that's a common story, right? Whether it's camping or... Or for some families, they're just so busy during Hockey. the week. Yeah, and Sunday morning might be the only time they actually kind of get to relax or to do chores around the house or whatever it is. But, you know, I think as a church, we would hope we're meeting a spiritual need, right? So I guess it's, it's for me, it's a question of spiritual health. And I have this, this conversation with people recently. You know, we, we know what we need to do physically. Like if I said, what do you do to take care of your physical health? You would tell me. You know what? I drink a lot of alcohol. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to see me drinking alcohol. Uh, not, not when you're cutting my hair. No. <laughs> so, yeah. So we know what we do with our physical health, but but what do we do to care for our spiritual health? Right? And so uh, that would be my question is what do you do? Or does that question even resonate? It does for me, and I okay. will tell you. I will give you my answer. I get a lot from my clients. Yes, they're getting a haircut from me and we're talking, but they have no idea what I'm getting from them. Right, right. I'm probably getting more from you than what you're ever gonna get from me. Hmm. But I don't I don't say that. No, of course not. But I do, like I listen and it's deep and it, you know, like I've, my clients, I've cut their hair if they're gonna have chemotherapy. I, I've cried with them. Um, I've embraced them. So even things that you're telling me and that I get from my clients is spiritual for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have goosebumps again. How come? Um, when I talk about something that is really deep for me or mm -hmm. really spiritual, it, it, I just, it, it, this has been since I was a kid. Mm. I start to tingle. And it's like, oh my God. And it's like a sixth, sixth sense for me. Okay. So when I'm doing something throughout the day and I'm internally questioning it, mm -hmm. no, Heidi, you shouldn't do that. You should do that. When I get these feelings, it's like, why are you even questioning it? Mm -hmm. Why are you even questioning it? My dad passed at 54 years old. It was a shock. Mm -hmm. um, I had gone to a psychotherapist saying, I want to talk to him. I feel like we didn't have closure, blah, 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 blah. I learned a lot of things. If I don't have faith that I'm going to see him again someday, I don't think I could deal with his passing. Okay. Okay, question. Do you think, in mm -hmm. your opinion, you have to attend church on a regular basis to be a Christian? N no, I don't. Okay. Um, but I do think that that as spiritual beings okay. and, and or, or as followers of Jesus, if you want to say as Christians, we're called to be in community. Okay. And, and, I, and I also, so what I worry about yeah. is when people, people either reduce Christianity to, I, well, I am a good person. It's just about being a good person. Okay. I, I, I think that's sort of the very base of it. Okay. And my worry is how are people challenged? So, you know, I, I talk about it like a buffet, okay? So if you go to um, a big potluck buffet and you take your plate and you start at the beginning of the line, you go to the end, you know how you will go through, I'll have that, but I don't want that. I like that. That looks good. And you only pick and choose what you want. At the end, you have what you want, right? You, have, you haven't taken the whole thing, mm -hmm. but you still have a big sloppy plate of food. Right. Versus... If you go to, let's say, a seven-course French meal, 
Yes. Which is thought through, well prepared. There's a reason for every course. You may not like all of the courses the same, but at the end you've had an incredible dining experience. So quality. My point is, is that if we pick and choose only what we like, then we're not necessarily challenged. So, so we'll say, oh, I like this in Christianity, but I don't like this, this, and this. And I'll take this from Eastern traditions, but I won't take. So we're never, we're never engaging fully in this, in the, in the faith or the system. And at the end of the day, we just come, come away with only the things that we like or want, which I, in, I think is somewhat, uh, individualistic. And I face that all the time as a, as a minister, there's scriptures all the time that, you know, you read and you think, oh my goodness, what is that about? And how do I talk about that? But if you engage it and struggle with it, usually you get insight or you grow somehow. If I was just to say, I'm only going to, going to deal with the ones that I like, mm -hmm. then I think you stay static. You don't really, you don't really move. So for me, spiritual health or faith or being a Christian is also a big part of it is that introspection and reflection and how do I need to change and what am I called to do, right? So spiritual growth, personal growth. Is that how you would yeah, kind I, of sum it up? For, I think, yeah, they're, I mean, they probably go hand in hand. I guess it's how do you define spiritual growth? And for me, that would be spiritual growth is coming to accept the unique creation that you are okay i am and how you offer that to the world and when you fully accept that and then how you offer that in service of humanity in the world then we we have much more alignment i guess with our with our spirit so a lot of the times when we're in in conflict or or we're confused or or whatever, it's because we're out of sync with that, right? We're misaligned with just claiming and understanding who we are. Having said that, mm -hmm. do you see more people out of sync and out of alignment within the last two and a half years? I certainly do. Yeah, I... Jeff, I've never worked so hard in 24 years to keep people smiling. Right. To... They're crying, mm -hmm. they're exhausted, they're scared, mm -hmm. and I have taken on, like, I, I come sometimes just feel like I'm doing this. So a very important part of what I do is when I leave here at the end of the day, mm -hmm. um, I try to not let it pull right. me down, but I do find it's taken a toll. Sure. Yeah, I mean, you, you have to be careful not to take that on, right? Exactly. And and it's hard. It is. Because yeah. a lot of these people I've known mm -hmm. for that many years. Yeah. And I've, I've watched them, and I'm, I'm watching them age along with myself. Mm -hmm. Some are living alone. Some are empty nesters. Mm -hmm. Some of their husbands or wives have, have passed, so their family dynamic has totally changed. Right. So you could look at your profession your, as a hairdresser, as, as a job, yeah. or you could look at it as a calling. Right? I don't call it a job. So what is, besides doing good haircuts, that's the technical part of it, I guess. What do you, how would you describe your calling? Okay, or? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you something. Mm -hmm. And I'm not bragging. I went through school with honors, mm -hmm. graduated with honors. When I graduated, grade 12, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to be a secretary. And the principal called my parents in for a meeting and said, listen, this girl mm -hmm. needs to be a doctor, a teacher. Mm -hmm. And my parents were like, well, you know, what do we do to, to challenge her? Well, you have to tell her, like, you know, like she's capable of so much more. But I didn't do that because I didn't feel confident and the desire wasn't there. Worked as a secretary. 13 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. So when my dad passed away suddenly, I left my job and I thought, what, what am I gonna do with my life? Well, I've cut hair since I'm five years old. Yeah, yeah I'll do that. That's mm -hmm. what I'm gonna do. Okay. I was never fully supported by my family. Mm -hmm. I was doing what was beneath me. Okay. But I can tell you, I am exactly where I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Goosebumps. Because yeah. I know I am. I know I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. I feel it. And what's the call? What's my calling? You're telling me what you're doing. Uh, 
a listener okay. with, with empathy mm -hmm. more than sympathy. Mm -hmm. I don't, as a rule, offer advice, but I can listen. Mm -hmm. And I find that the majority of my customers need to talk. Right. They might be holding something inside and they know they can trust me with what they tell me. They're going to get a hug. Mm -hmm. We're going to cry together. We'll just, sometimes just the look. Mm -hmm. Which points to sort of the need, right, within society for there to be places for, there's not that many places where people can just be heard, right? And you know what? And in a, I guess in a chair like this, you know, it, it is a still captive moment where people, if they feel they need to talk, they're they very can. vulnerable. Yeah, they are. I'm sure. They're very vulnerable. Um, it's funny because many years ago, my daughter got me the sign the therapist is in. I'm called the therapist. Right. My my business name is not that. But I refer to myself as a therapist. Mm -hmm. I hear it all. So I, I feel very honored when people share things with me, when they ask me to do things. I mean, one client has asked me to be the executor for her will. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a big right. trust sure. factor there. If you're the empathetic listener to the struggles and challenges of others, that's a, a service, of course, and it's a calling that you're giving. So what do you do to care for your own spirit? Meditate in silence. Okay. Do you know that since my dad passed in 95, I've never turned the radio on in my vehicles? Really? I'm going to get a little teary, okay? That's fine. The psychotherapist told me, because when people want to connect, and I don't know what your feeling is on this, when, when individuals want to connect with those who have passed, mm -hmm. when you want it so badly... It usually doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And she gave me a piece of advice and she said, when you're by yourself in your vehicle, don't turn your radio on. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, I'd hear a voice. Right. I do hear a voice. Mm -hmm. I talk to him out loud. I talk to my parents out loud. I cannot stand the radio on in a vehicle. It, it just about drives me insane because that's my time mm -hmm. that I'm connecting. And what's so important is that you're making that time because, you know, the radio is interesting because it's sort of a metaphor for how we keep ourselves busy and distracted. You know, let's say in the church, I might say, listen for the voice of God, right? Like just listen for that voice and, or that God speaks to us as you're articulating, and people say, well, God doesn't talk to me. But the question is, do we actually create the space to listen? You know, what you're doing in your car, right? You're, you're being intentional about finding that quiet Well, Jeff, quiet I time. can't get anywhere else by myself right. to do that. This is a busy household. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on in my household. So for me to have time to myself, I have to go in the vehicle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But this down here is a major release for me. But I don't, I don't disclose much about my personal life with my clients. I, I understand that, yeah. yeah. Because ultimately, they're coming here for their experience. They're not coming to solve my issues. Right, right. They're coming for me to not only make them look better, but to feel better. My husband said to me one day, I don't know what you do to people in there, but they go in with this mm -hmm. and they come out and they're all happy and they feel so excited. And he said, like, what's going on in there? Mm -hmm. And I never thought about it. Right. I'm just like, well, yeah, I'm doing their hair and I'm, you know, they look pretty darn good. And <laughs> come out but better. Yeah. I didn't realize that it's a whole mental game. Mm -hmm. But as I've gotten older and I've changed, yeah, that that's a major factor of coming here. Mm -hmm. Like some people get their hair cut and they're like, did, did, did you cut the left side of my hair? And I'm like, yeah, I did. Don't you remember? No, Heidi, I, like I honestly don't remember that because we are so enthralled in deep conversation that... 
They, they don't remember me doing that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do your eyebrows like, a little bit. Like even this conversation, right? You, yeah. you expressing that um, this is a call for you. I would say, I would say it's a ministry. What and, I do? Yeah. And people, people think of ministry as, you know, the one, the one man or woman standing on a Sunday morning in a pulpit, right? And as long as we think of ministry or callings as only for those folks, then it abdicates our responsibility. Um, you know, we can say, well, I, I'm not, I don't have a ministry or I don't have a calling. That's for other people where I would say we all do. And if, and if we're intentional, we, we take the time to figure out what that is. So the question isn't what am I going to be? It's how am I going to, how am I going to serve in the world? I, there's you and I have a lot of similarities. We have other conversations. We absolutely yeah. will. Well, Jeff, it was very nice knowing you. You too. And Thank you. we will see you. And you never know when I'm going to sit down in that chair in front of you at 10:30 on a Sunday morning. You're always welcome. Thank you. Thank you.